and welcome back to uh, UE5 BP Guru. In the last episode, we got to the point where you could see whichever your creature is that's in one of these uh, Pokeballs or ring uh, rings or Temtem -tem holders, whatever you want to call them. Uh, that was where we got to last time. So today we're going to be taking a look now at the actual widget itself. Um, there is a bit of setup because obviously if you followed along with the main menu tutorial, we've actually set that up in here uh, as an action mapping. So we've created the main menu um, input action. We've clicked on start, we've done a flip flop. We've created the pause menu, set the pause menu uh, variable. We've added that to the viewport, set input modes to game and UI, and set the show mouse cursor. Now if you can't find show mouse cursor, it's because you need to turn off context sensitive. It'll be there, okay? They like to hide it for some reason but just set, set show mouse cursor um, will be in there and tick that to true. Your target will always be this uh, player controller. Um, same for in your input, it will always be player controller. Off the flip flop B, you wanna get remove parent and we're gonna use that variable we set, which is the pause menu. We're gonna set our game mode back to, our input mode to game only and we'll, again, the player controller gets plugged into there and then we show mouse cursor to false and again, plug that uh, player controller in. That'll bring up your menu just like this. Uh, and you, these are all buttons if you remember correctly. So we'll be adding something to our main menu today as well to bring up our party like so. Now, obviously there's nothing in it. That's me messing around in the uh, widget editor. But um, yeah, so the next thing we want to do now is um, click on our widget. So it's very basic. Um, we've got a uh, an image here that I've just set to black and put occupancy to 0 0.5. Same for this here. Uh, we've got a another image here, which is I'm going to change the name actually to um, Ringmon image. Um, we've also got um, two buttons that say yes or no. They've got a, just a, a basic text on them that says yes or no. Uh, and I've just put in here, would you like to receive? And then it's got this, which is uh, her badger. Like so. Very, very basic, but it's the code that's behind it that will um, drive us forward. So when we click enter on the ring mom start, let's go back through it here. We check to see if we have a Pokemon when we press E. And if we have, it just says has Pokemon. If it's false, we set up this widget where we've created here. We add it to the viewport and we set our input mode to UI only. And then we get our player controller and we show our mouse cursor. In here, what we need to do is we just want to define what these buttons do. So in the graph, we should have our list of buttons here. So we've got our no button and our yes button. I've named them, of course. And what we're doing is uh, in the event graph, is if you click on one of these, so let's do the no button, you come down, it says on clicked. And it will produce this event for you. So for the no, it's just remove it from parent, set the input mode back to game only, and set mouse cursor back to false. Very, very simple. That'll just close the widget for you and allow you to carry on playing and select a, select a different ring mon if you want to. With the yes button, it's a little bit more complicated. We need to cast a third person character. We want to get that current ring mon value we set when we walk into the bounds. And then we want to set that to our party slot. So to do that from here, now again, this variable has been set up in here. We have ring mon party, which is our party struct in our third person character. That way our third person character is always holding the information for all of the ring mon that's currently on his persons. So back in this here, we're getting the current ring mom, which is on the third person character as well. Um, we then break that ring mom build struct. We set our ring mom party and we make the party struct and it'll give us all six of our slots. And then we make party info struct. We, we make that, we pull off from slot one because that's where we want it to go. When we have no Pokemon we, uh, or ring mom, we have to make that party go into slot one. And we just plug everything in and we set the slot to true because there's something set in there now. Uh, and then all we do is we set our input mode to game only. We show mouse cursor to false. 
we remove our self, this accept Pokemon from the parent, and we set has Pokemon to true, which is all of these are coming from our third person character. So the game now knows our third person character has a Pokemon. Um, it knows it's got a party member in slot one. Um, and we're good to go. So at this point now, the rest is kind of just visual, right? So for example, the brush, uh, I've added into our current, our creature base strut, where is that? Uh, Ringmon basic info, there we go. In here, I've added in current XP and max XP. Um, I've also added in non-shiny image and shiny image. The shiny image was more just for if I want to roll shinies on the starter, uh, starter Pokemon or starter Ringmon. But um, we'd, we'd definitely be using the non-shiny image. And the image I've pulled through is just the ones I had created um, in here. You've probably seen them about a lot, um, but I've just, just brought those in, to be honest. So, yeah, with those new uh, floats, we can actually now grab some different bits. So if you look at our designer, we've got this image here. That is literally just this. So casting to the third-person character, we get our current ringmon, which is the one we set when we walk in the bounds. We get the Ringmon base info, and we get that non-shiny image. And from here, we pull off the value. We make slate. Uh, we make a slate brush, and we just if you open it up, the image will be at the bottom. You just plug it in there, and that's all you need to do for that. And then for the text, which is uh, the name here, it is literally as simple as again casting to the third-person character, getting that current Ringmon, getting the Ringmon build. We break that and we get um, the name value from that list. And we just plug it in, and it does that for you as well. Very, very simple stuff, uh, nothing too tasking. Um, very basic, but very effective. And again, I'll show you how that works. Literally, we press E. Would you like to receive her badger? No, I don't want her badger. Would you like to receive tail flame? Mm, no. Would you like to receive Osta? Yeah, let's receive Osta and it sets it in my slot. Now, we can't see our slot at this point, so we need to create uh, our party menu, right? Which is what we're gonna do uh, today as well. So, we have our creature theoretically in the void, which is our party. Let's, um, let's go back now and go down to our third person character to get our widgets. So, we create our menu widget first. So, let's go into that and have a look. Here's our menu widget, which we created last time. Um, or like on episode two, I think it was, we created our menu widget. Now, this is probably a very important widget to make because it'll drive all the other menus. Um, so if we go into our graph, all I've done is I've set up so I can close it and that's just removal widgets. Now, if I had a player HUD, which would be like your mini map and things like that, you might have your money on there. That would have to be recreated afterwards. You'd have to recreate your player HUD. But um, for now, we're just removing all widgets we're, shut, we're removing that mouse cursor and we're setting the mode to game mode only. And for the team menu, all we're doing is we are creating um, the party widget because I want it to sit next to the menu so we can interact with both. <clears throat> we are just clicking to create that and adding that to the viewport. That's all we need to do in the main menu. And the result you get is if we click play, we click T, mine's set up to T because you can't use escape at this point. Um, and we click on party, it will bring this up, okay? So let's move on to the um, party menu. Let's bring up the party. Now, a lot of this I want to set to hidden. Now it's all working, I want to set it to hidden so that it only will show up if I have something in that slot. Now, I'm gonna uh, openly admit this at this point. This isn't the most effective way to set up your slots um, like this. Uh, you could do it that um, you create this one slot individually and then you just get your party widget to create six slots. Um, but um, that it, all it would do is basically save you from setting up slot one, slot two, slot three, slot four, slot five, slot six basically sets the amount of stuff you have on this menu. I've done it like this because I'm 
didn't think I'm gonna be honest I didn't think about it at the time but you can do it like this it's, it doesn't hurt but you, the easiest way to do it would be to just create one slot in a separate widget so you would set your widget up size to be 538 by 115 and then you would get a vertical box and then you would just tell the vertical box to create six slots but you know it is what it is right it is what it is um I've done it now, um, and it's it's fine. It'll work perfectly like this. I've got no qualms at it, about it at the moment, so I've just done it the long way, the long and tedious way. <laughs> so all I've done is I've basically created two. I'll, I'll look at one, and then you just got to recreate this six times. But you've got um, slot name, slot one name, slot two name, slot three name. You've got uh, slot one health bar which is a progression bar and then believe you've got underneath you've got slot one xp bar you've got slot one sprite and we've got this which is just a level dot which i've multiplied six times there's nothing special about that it will all stay the same and then you've got slot one level and then i need to obviously do that for these as well but uh for now i've just named the first one so we've got slot one text which is the name health xp sprite and level I will do gender at some point, but I haven't even begun to fathom how I'm going to set that up um, at the moment. I, I know it's just going to be a, a randomized 50-50 roll, but um, um, I haven't got around to implementing that yet. So now we've got all that, we need to make sure that all of our texts are variables so that we can manipulate these. Um, and we need to make sure all of our progress bars and our sprite are also variables at this point what we need to do then is come to our graph now this looks very very it looks like a lot but i promise you uh it's not too bad forget the other slots for now because they're not set up because we haven't got to the point of catching another creature yet but once i create once we get to the point of catching another creature i will have to do this so what it's doing is it's checking to see if the slot is set now at the moment everything remains visible but i will change that at some point um for testing purposes i want it to remain visible so i know it's working um if you want to add yours to be visible set all of this in the in the designer go along and set everything to uh where is it uh visibility to hidden like so and when you uh, let's do it for this one sorry set visibility to hidden okay you won't see it in here but when you press start you go to your party menu it's now gone right um what we're going to do is um where is, where is it where's it gone uh no wrong one where is it there it is what we're going to do is um we will basically set it so that if the slot is not set we have everything set to not visible but if it is true we would have to reset the visibility to true and then run this information so i'm probably going to do that on a sequence to be honest to keep it all a bit tidier keep it all away from one another so we can actually kind of see what's going on but for now let's move on to setting up the rest of this code so on event construct, because when we construct this code, this widget, we want to know, um, first off, um, we want to know of what our ring, what's in our ring mom party, right? So we cast our third person character, we get the ring mom party, we break that party struct to get the slots, <clears throat> and then we will have to break every slot. To get the specific information we want <clears throat> now the first thing we want to do is use that to, to drive this so has this slot been set <clears throat> if that's true we can set all the information if it's false we'll set the visibility to hidden <clears throat> excuse me so what information do we need well we only need things like the name the health the XP the level and the sprite so we get our health from our base, our creature base stat. Now I've changed the health variables to floats to make this run through easier. I've also set our current and max XP that I set up in the base info as floats as well. 
So we're going to get those two things from our creature info and our creature base stats. So we need to break both of those to get that information. We, we just divide our health by our health max. We also need to divide our current XP via our max XP. We need to convert our name to a text. <clears throat> and we need to convert our current level also to text. From the branch true, we get our slot one health that we've set up as a variable. And we set the percentage via that health divide. Same for the slot XP. We get the we get the variable we've set, the, the progress bar uh, variable we've created. We set percentage and we drive that current XP divide by max XP into here. We, we then get that slot one level um, text we turn into a variable, we set text, and we plug in our current level into that. And then we get our slot one name, we, we set that as a text, and we plug our name into there. <clears throat> we then get our sprite variable we created, set the brush, we make slate brush, and we plug our non-shiny image into that. Now again, you could have a branch that checks to see if uh, it is shiny or not and then we can set the shiny image instead we can literally do that on a on a branch um, if you want to would be super easy to implement if, if I decided to add in the shiny roll as well and if I was going to add that shiny roll in I would do exactly what we did before with our encounter but I would just do it in uh, in here so I would um, roll for. I would roll shiny probably here. So if I move this back, I would roll for shiny. If it's true or false, I would set the, that. Uh, I'd set a new variable is shiny, and I would then in here expose is shiny and plug that in. Uh, and that would be, I could probably do it now to be honest, but I'm not going to for right now. I, I want to get everything else set up first. So, yeah, that's how we got to the point now of having our Ringmon in our party. So now that, that should be, if you're at you're up the point I am, when we click enter and we click yes, and we go to T, and we go to party, we should have this in here now. Okay. Uh, that is all the code that's in here for now. Eventually, we will probably add a button onto the slot that we can click, like make this a whole button that we can just click on. And then we'll bring up a new menu that says like stats, move, release, blah, 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 you know, all that good stuff. Um, the usual Pokemon spiel. Um, there is something else I want to add in here eventually that would be... Um, Uh, that would be um, giving it a name but I haven't got that far yet uh, I'm still trying to think of where I'd add that in but that's superficial stuff that can be done down the line it's not a big deal at the moment now the other five need to be set up I can set those up off screen it's not an issue but I'm going to worry about that once we um, we get to our encounters we start doing damage and we start capturing creatures so thank you so much for checking this episode out. In the next episode, we're going to then set up now that we can get our Ringmon in the encounter. So when we go through the encounter, it checks the Ringmon and spawns it. <clears throat> so thank you so much, guys, for watching. Don't forget to like, comment um, with any, any questions you have. And, of course, um, subscribe if you aren't already. It's free to do. You can always change your mind. Um, and I really appreciate it. It really helps the channel grow. Uh, so I'll see you tomorrow and uh, take care. Bye.